Hi everyone and welcome to another Keen Tools tutorial. Today we're going to show you how we added fire to a Ford Ranger driving in a desert in this shot using Geo Tracker for Blender. You will also see how to track an object from an animated camera perspective. That is, when you have both camera motion and a moving object in your shot. For those of you who don't know, GeoTracker is a geometry-based object and camera tracking tool, also available in Nuke, After Effects and soon in Houdini. Check out the download links in the description box. This time we're going to be using it in Blender 4.4 with this beautiful cat from Flow, the animation movie. So let's go ahead and jump in. First off, we're gonna need a camera track to make the fire look more realistic as the car moves. We've already done it using the built-in camera tracker in Blender. It's quite easy and there are plenty of tutorials out there about it, so we're not gonna waste your time showing that. As you see, the solve error is 0.35, which is good enough for adding fire simulation. And so we're gonna use this animated camera for the camera input in GeoTracker now. Let's go back to layout and open GeoTracker. We get a constraint warning, which basically says that as we created this camera track in Blender, it has constraints. Let's hit cancel, select this camera and go to object constraint properties. What we need to do is bake its keys to be able to position the whole scene along with the camera animation in the 3D space afterwards. So let's just press constraints to F curve. If you delete this geo tracker and create a new one now, you'll see no warning, meaning that all constraints are gone. So let's plug our movie clip. Our Ford Ranger 3D model is already imported here in our scene. Let's just enable it. The next step is analyzing the clip. When it's done, we can go to pin mode. This green mesh is our 3D model. If you can't see it anywhere, press center geo. This will bring it in front of the camera. Well, that's a weird angle, but it doesn't matter much because we're gonna line it up manually anyways by just clicking and dragging the mesh. The first two pins set the model's position. The third one does the rotation and scale. And all the next pins will allow for more precise model alignment and also help estimate the focal length if automatic focal length estimation is on. In our case, we got our focal length from the camera track. It's 25 millimeters as you may see here. So you'll need to spend a bit of time lining it up like this. You're not gonna get a better track by adding more pins. In fact, their number doesn't play any role in the actual tracking. Pins are just handles for the model alignment. So when the model is lined up, press track forward and let the add-on do its job. That was quick. We can check how stable our track is if we enable the lock view option and hit play. We can see over here that the mesh slides off just a little, so we can fix it by just dragging it in place and hit refine. This will update the animation between our manual keyframes. We can also jump between the manual keyframes now by pressing alt and right and left arrows to see if it's all good. Well, maybe this one needs a bit of tweaking too. Let's hit refine again and press play to see our object track. Let's fix this one as well. Don't forget to hit refine after each time you make some adjustments. Okay, we can disable lock view and play it again to see if it's all good. We can also add another workspace and check out our object track with a solid 3D model. It's all good, but if we go back to 3D view, we'll see that our object track just doesn't look right. This is because we have a scaling issue here. The car model and the camera are not proportionally sized. We're gonna fix it. Let's check our car model size first. That looks right, which means we need to scale down the camera, but we have no idea how much small it has to be. So here's a little trick. We're going to go to the side view and scale down our car so that it gets exactly on the Y axis, which will correspond to the ground plane of our camera track. So let's zoom in on the camera, go to the scene tab, scale, geometry, and bring this value down while holding shift until our car gets right on the green line. We'll need this value 0.085 in a second, so let's remember that. We can see that both the camera and the car move just like in our footage, which is good. But as you remember, we've just made our car smaller than it should be in reality. So what we'll do is go to the scene tab again, scale, scene, select geometry as pivot point, which means we're going to scale it relevant to geometry. And this time scale up the whole scene by dividing the scale factor by 0.085, the ratio we got after scaling down our geometry and press OK. Our car is back to its original size and everything is scaled properly now. We can go to the camera view and check that our 3D scene matches with the footage. What we can also do from the scene tab is move the whole scene to the world origin relevant to geometry and rotate it along the X to put it back on the ground. 
Now the car sets off from the world origin and the drone camera is following it almost the same speed as in the clip. We can go ahead and add fire now. Let's duplicate our car model and name it as car fire and disable the original 3D model. Then go to physics, fluid and select the float type. This is going to be our fire emitter. We also need a domain for it. So let's add a cube, increase the size and pull it up a little. Then go to its physics properties, select fluid also and switch the type to domain. All right, we've set up a basic fire simulation. Let's customize it now. We're gonna go to edit mode, switch this to face select and select the parts of the model we want to set on fire holding shift. Then let's go to object data properties, create a new vertex group and click assign. Let's exit edit mode, rename cube to domain and then select our car fire and start setting up fire. First off, we're gonna switch flow type to fire, select our vertex group to narrow down the area that's gonna actually burn, then switch the flow behavior to inflow to make our fire burn continuously. Over here, we can set up how far from the surface the fire is going to go. Let's try a lower value and see how that works. Then we can also adjust initial velocity and fire direction. We're gonna set initial Y to minus three so that our fire sort of pulls back as the car goes and initial X to one. We can also enable texture to make it more detailed and realistic. Then go to texture properties, add new texture, select clouds type, play with the size if you like. The default value looks okay. And then also go to colors and increase contrast a bit. Then let's go to physics and go down with the fuel. You can come back and tweak any of these settings at any moment in the future. Let's go ahead and set up our domain now. First off, let's activate adaptive domain to make it adapt to the size of the fire. You may see that right now the domain is not moving along with the car. We need to link them. So let's select our 3D model, go to Geo Tracker, Export, enable linked and export an empty. And then select both the domain and the empty holding shift, press Ctrl P and select object, keep transform and there we go. As you may notice, even though we selected fire only, we still have a bit of smoke over here, which is cool. There's a couple of other settings you can play with here in physics properties like buoyancy, heat and vorticity. Let's increase vorticity and reduce heat just a bit, for example. And then let's also add noise again to add more details to fire and reduce its strength. Let's maybe reduce heat even more. You can adjust these values your own way to come up with the result that you prefer. Now let's increase resolution divisions. The higher that value, the more cool our fire is going to look, but consequently that will slow down our playback. Let's now bake our simulation. We're gonna go down here and set frame start to minus 10 so that when the clip starts, our fire is already in full swing. Set the end frame to 87 and then let's also increase our resolution divisions to 128. Switch cache type to all to bake all simulation settings at once and then press bake all. It's gonna take some time. That looks good. We can now set up material for our fire simulation. Let's go to shading, select rendered viewport shading and switch to object down here. Let's explore this pre-made network we have here. It's based on the principled volume node, which goes to the volume input of the material output. The idea here is that we take flame out of the volume info node, give it a certain color with the color ramp node and send it to the emission color. You can play with it to give it a custom look, choose a specific color and sort of its thickness you can also add more color stops here to make it look more complex. And then we also have a math node here, which is now set to add. You can also switch it to multiply. This value here defines how bright that color is going to be. And by increasing this density here, you can add more black smoke. You can also set up a custom color for that smoke. That's one of the ways of setting up a material. You can also do it in a slightly different way. We'll need a principled volume and material output again, but this time we're gonna use the attribute node. Send its color input to the emission strength, type heat in here, then add a color ramp like this. Set up a fire color, insert a math node in here, switch it to multiply. This value here is going to define the brightness of our fire. Let's add more color stops. Use density to adjust the amount of visible smoke and add another color ramp over here to control the amount of fire. 
So these were a couple of ways of setting up fire material. As for our 3D model, we need to add a holdout and send it to material output so that the model itself will not be rendered, but at the same time interact with the fire simulation. We also need to activate motion blur over here in the object properties before going to compositing. And here is our usual compositing network. We just add a movie clip and render layers and mix them together using the alpha over node. We can send it to render now. That's our final result. I hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked the content. Download GeoTracker for Blender to try it yourself. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell to stay informed about our new tutorials. Thank you for watching and see you next time.